This is Twit. We had a kind of interesting Tuesday, Mac Break Weekly. We're sitting there and all of a sudden somebody's <laughs> tweets. <laughs> oh, no. You know, oh. you know, you can log into a Mac. You can change settings in a Mac just by using the root account with a no <laughs> password. Yeah. Uh, Renee Ritchie and, and, and there and Andy Anako and I, and we, we went, what? And, and <laughs> Patrick, our programmer, Patrick Delahanty, tried it. He said, that's, that's right. It's true. And then Renee tried it and I tried it. And we we were what the hell? How could this happen? This is High Sierra, the new new Apple Mac OS. They first of all on Macs traditionally the uh, the root account is not active, so they activated it. And then because it had no password, it was weird though because the first time it might not work, but the second time it worked, or the third time it worked. So you had to try a few times. Um, I quickly was able to go onto my Mac, give the root account a password, just open terminal and type uh, sudo. P-A-S-S-W-D, password, root, give it a new password, and that fixed it. But that then Apple, early. well, yeah, Apple pushed out a fix on Thursday, which was, you know, more sophisticated. Then they pushed out an update to High Sierra that broke the fix. Yep. What the hell? Well, what, I mean, what, what this goes to demonstrate is that it's, no matter how good your intentions are, how, you know, how hard you try, it's virtually impossible to guarantee absolute security in a complex uh, electronic system, you know, and whether it's, you know, I mean, Apple is as good as any company out there doing this stuff. And if they can't get it right, who, you know, who can, and, you know, just think about, I mean, we've seen all these things, you know, the Mirai botnet with IOT devices, and now we're getting into automated and connected cars. I mean, the potential for what can go wrong there just explodes exponentially. So we're screwed. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I have to funny. say, it getting broken later, I had a different read on that. I think anyone that's dealt with the de development team has checked files in yeah. and accidentally overwritten, like, your your co-worker's work, especially oh. something that's done hastily. Well, they need a, minute, they so. need a better uh, subversion <laughs> system. Sure. Uh, version control. Yeah, these version, yeah, this, yeah. That's not, yeah, should not be able to happen. That's but, I mean, I do think this really brings a, a very serious question forward. Like, I'm not someone, like, I love Apple, I'm a huge Apple fan, everything I buy is Apple, but I do think there is some truth, I think there's a kernel of truth in these critiques about Apple not making the Mac as big a priority as they used to. And I think when you have a devastating bug like this that comes forward, something that really seems like, you know, this isn't an edge case, this isn't like a, you know, really sophisticated bug, you know, this is this this is a really big oversight. I do think it is reasonable for Mac fans to look at that and go, "What's what's going on here? Is is the Mac really the priority it needs to be?" We're going to be covering a piece later in the show where it looks at uh, you know Tim Cook and his legacy so far, and I do think that it's a legit criticism that a company as big as Apple that they do seem to be struggling with getting out yearly updates for iOS and macOS on time. I guess that's my question. Is this just, you know, bugs happen. Uh, and Apple fixed it quickly, unfixed it. I presume they fixed <laughs> it again. Should we draw larger conclusions from this, Christina? Or is it just that's something that happens? I think that it's too soon to draw a larger conclusion. I, I do I do agree with, with um, you know, there's been a lot of conversation because it was in addition to the the, the root air issue, which is a massive, massive security flaw, and then, and then kind of it's hobbled way of handling things. And then even the root update itself broke file sharing, so you had to use terminal to re-enable that. Um, you know, if you were using uh, file shares, um, there there were some, uh, the, the, the iOS 11.2 update that they had to rush out um, because there was December a, a time December 2nd, issue. you'd yes. get notifications from third-party apps that would crash your iPhone. Right. And and by the way, uh, if you were, if you had that problem, you had to go, in, it wasn't enough just to install iOS 11.2, which came out yesterday. You had to turn off all notifications, which, by the way, is not easy on iOS. No, it's There's not. no master switch. You got to go through. You have to go through each individual apps. app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and no, I mean, and I think that, I think it's fair to say um, what's what's happening here, but I, I think that 
I don't want to draw massive conclusions from one week, from one bad week. I think we have to look at things. I think if we come back in a year and we're able to kind of say, has this been a pattern? Or even right now, if we were to say, what has been the pattern of, of bug fixes to releases? Then you could maybe say something, something's rotten to Denmark. But, but other than that, but I feel odd making some sort of sweeping generalization after, after, yeah. after a bad week. And like, you know what? You're going to, some people are going to say, oh, this would never have happened under Steve. Oh, of course it would have. <laughs> but it would have. It, it happened all have. the time. Yeah. And it did. But, but to Brianna's point about, um, you know, the, the reduced attention to the Mac, have we heard, has anybody looked back or, you know, do they have, has anybody still got copies of the beta versions of, uh, High Sierra running, you know, were they able to look back and see if this bug was in the betas that were running That's all summer long? I mean, how That's far back yeah. does this problem go? Yeah. And yeah. From if what it went I've that read, long without anyone noticing, right? Yeah, well, and, and from what I mean, and, and that that's un, um, unclear. I, from what I've read, and and I've seen some anecdotal stuff. There was some forum activity um, in in September about it, and and ah. it does appear as if this probably did exist in the betas. Okay. And that's that was the part that to me was the scariest is that this sort of bug existed for so long and, and wasn't tested. Yeah, but um, I mean, it, 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 would, it would be very serendipitous if somebody, some user just came along and said, oh, I wonder if root would work. Well, someone yeah. did in, in, in their own user forums yeah. uh, before yeah. all this happened. And then nobody like, did anything about it. And then, well, yeah. which I, to me, this is the bigger problem yeah. than even saying it does, does that all have, you know, a, 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 you know, is their QA not good enough? Because I, again, I think that it's too soon to make that sort of judgment. My, my bigger concern with all of this is that a lot of people really came after the original person who shared the exploit on Twitter and said, you didn't report this the right way. And, and, and how dare you not go through the right channels, X, Y, Z. Um, a, I think that, and, and I said this on Rocket, and and I and I and look, I work for for a large software company who we have, you know, big operating system, and, and I don't speak for them, but but we've definitely had our own, you know, fair share of, of things that go on. I'm 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 um aware of that, but I think that you have to acknowledge that um, even though responsible disclosure is good, going after the messenger, especially when you are a nearly, you know, you're you're a 750 billion dollar company, doesn't need its fanboys to to attack, the, you know, somebody who brought um, a, a bug out there um, in the public. That, that's the first thing. I think the second thing is, and I've talked to a lot of people about this, it's not really always really clear with Apple how you can even report a bug and whether or not they will take it seriously. And I've talked to people who are, are well-known in the community who often don't feel like their radars, which is Apple's term for filing a bug report, are seen and have to make a fuss on Twitter. And then everyone on Twitter will say, well, why didn't you just file a radar? And people are like, well, I do, but nothing happens. And case in point, you know, and look, I understand that that um, most of the times the Apple user forums are not moderated, but if these sorts of things are happening there, I'm a little more concerned with, are the right channels in place if people do find these sorts of bugs and find these sorts of holes is there a right avenue for them to be able to get the communication across? Are the right people looking at those things? That's that's to me a, um, a bigger problem than maybe um, trying to you know ascertain whether or not there's there's a QA issue or they don't care enough about the Mac. It's more like how easy is it for people to report bugs and how confident are we that there are enough people behind the scenes reading those bug reports and testing things out? Yeah, so the, the guy who did it is a, a Turkish developer, uh, Lemmy Orhan Aryan. He says, Dear Apple support, this was on uh, Tuesday, we noticed a huge security issue at Mac OS High Sierra. Anyone can log in as root with an empty password after clicking on a login button several times. Are you aware of it, Apple? This was his way of reporting it. Yeah, I, I think... You know, if he was a security researcher, you'd expect him to do it in the more traditional method, notifying Apple before letting uh, the public know. On the other hand, it's such a serious flaw. Apple support responded very quickly with, send us a private message. Let's let's figure out what's going on. So it blindsided Apple a little bit. Um, they, uh, to I their think, credit, yeah. they fixed it within two days and then unfixed it, but that's another matter. 